Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's a trade of the day, Friday afternoon slash evening Zoom edition. Rocking my Solana background today. It's had a good week, as has AVAX. And uh, a lot of the blue chip altcoins have done well. Ethereum has had a bounce back day. Bitcoin up double digits this week. It's, uh, I, I'm probably just too darn superstitious to call this a bull market, but uh, it seems like it. Anyway, let's uh, go to the charts and check it out. All right, you should see my Bitcoin day chart. Yes, sir. Thank you. And yeah. all right, approaching my my higher range of 45K, we've hit 45.5. Looks like a little higher than that today, 45.650. And then uh, dipping down to 44.3. So I'm sorry, that's 44.360. But we haven't hit 45 yet. I think that's that could be this weekend, maybe even later today. We can always have that retrace. You know, people are talking about a retrace down here in the 31, 32 area before the big the big pump. Who knows? There's still, you know, the BTC or Bitcoin ETF. Um floating around out there maybe that happens in january i wonder if that's priced in that could be a buy the rumor sell the news event i think i've said that before but anyway i'm just really enjoying this pump i've embraced some swing trading and we're going to talk about that in a little bit after i review the market overall bitcoin's looking good on the day chart and ethereum it's broken through my bottom range that I'd adjusted last week. And if I scrunch this down a little bit, we have a ways to go to the top range still, which I put at 3,000. Maybe that was too high. I could have put it right around here. There's some resistance and support back here from last year uh, around uh, 25, 2600. Obviously, we have to get there first. But there's not a whole lot in the way. From, from here in the past that went pretty pretty straight down. So it should go, well, it's harder to go up than it is down. So it'll probably take longer to get up to 3,000. Will it happen this this month, this calendar year? Don't know. Yeah. Any uh, yeah. comments or questions about the markets overall, Bitcoin and Ethereum? I think Bitcoin ought to make five or 50 rather and Ethereum ought to make 3,000. When do you think that's going to happen, Big Ed? End of December. End of December. Ed with a bold prediction. Yeah, I'm, I'm full of bull. That's true. <laughs> well, I said bold, not bull. But, um, oh, okay. Well, I, I, guess I heard what I heard. <laughs> either word would work here in this scenario. So he's, he's, he's bold with his bull. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Um, Anyone else care to contradict or, or pile on? All right. Um, so a new feature. Okay, I have two AVAX charts up here, but uh, this is my one hour chart. And I I showed you what I what I did back on, on Tuesday the 5th. And I've got the one hour chart up. I'm using the same setup that you guys have seen me with my day trading. I just use it using it on a different time frame. And I got in on this AVAX trade. Uh, I saw some, I think it was recommended by the Crypt Nation folks on, on their newsletter. And I, I looked at three of their recommendations and decided to, to swing trade these on the, like between the hour and the four hour charts. So I set those up and I bought, AVAX, Solana, and Rune. Um, AVAX and Solana are doing really well. Um, I'm at 5x leverage, and they're they're both over 90% in profit. So uh, I think I sold a half of one of them, but I'm still in them. So this is this is out of character for me uh, as a as a leverage day trader. I usually get out after you know 10, 20%, but I'm hanging in there on these two. So. I think there's some value in that in that Tuesday Crypt Nation letter, and they talk about you know coins of the week and things that they're watching and and so I caught these two. This is Avax. I'll look at the 
Solana. I think once I click this, it's going to go to the current time. But anyway, to review, it was in the green zone, recommended. I got in, and then it's had this nice move up. So on Solana. Same thing. Yeah, this is on the 8th. So let's see if it'll. It was pretty similar. It had bounced up here and then came back down. And then I got in in this vicinity. And it's had this nice move up. So again, using if you're more of a swing trader than a day trader, feel free to use these these concepts, but do so on a um, you know longer time frame. You mentioned room. Is that yeah. right now? We're going to look at that one now. Can I ask you a question about that strategy, CJ? Okay. Um, you said you were in that what five x or something? I yeah. think. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, so so your reason for going in at 5x, is that because it, it gives you a lot more space for liquidation and, and less stress because you're leaving it in for a long time? That's exactly the reason. Cool. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, I've dabbled with a little bit of swing trading on, on Bing X, which I just learned is going to start requiring KYC. So, ugh. Uh, they're, of course, slammed in the face of Americans. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. But um, anyway, we'll go through the rune setup as well. Yeah, I got in around here, and it's gone up and down, and then this one's a little bit negative. I'm down at 5x leverage. I'm down a little over 1% on a chart. So this one hasn't taken off yet, but obviously the other two have. Uh, Rune is Thorchain. It's a pretty well-known uh, altcoin, so I'm 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 hopeful that uh, that it pumps up to sometime this month. So, and again, all three of these were from the Crypt Nation newsletter. So, uh, check that out. Uh, I think you can probably use Altcoin Alert for this kind of thing. And just, uh, I mean, I often go to the long-term sentiment. And if you read the description, you know, it's comparing 24 hours to 20 days. So, yeah. and I've, I focused on this about it a year or so ago when I forgot the guy from the tie, I forgot his name, but uh, he, he was suggesting that that was a really good way to go. And they were, they had back tested some things Josh. using that Josh, that's his name. Thanks, Peter. So Josh from the tie suggested that was a really uh um, good way to go. But that was before the big, you know, the big chaos of 2022. So I'm not sure how accurate that is anymore. I may switch over to matching up Elder Impulse hourly with short-term sentiment on my day, on my day trading, and then use the long-term more for swing trading if I like the results of swing trading, which I am so far. And I'll try to bring both approaches to, you know, to my Zoom calls on Monday and Friday if you guys like it. So. Yeah, it's good. Um, right. Yeah. Craig is in. Yeah, it sounds good to me because I am more towards swing than day. Mm -hmm. I think that might be most of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> this my whole thing might evolve into a, a swing trading approach as opposed to day trading. But um, I feel like I'm more qualified on day trading. And as, as, a, as a swing trader, there's people – you know, on this call who are more qualified than me. So maybe that'll be more of a collaboration. That's okay. Well, what for me, what it is, your, your detail is very good and I don't process it quickly enough like you can and with all your alerts and everything. So I have a hard time maintaining the pace at which you process all the information. So I need that time for swinging. Okay. Yeah, that is one thing I do like about swing trading. If my alert goes off and I'm chewing on a cheeseburger away from my computer and I don't feel like looking at, and I can't get the information I want from my phone. You know, I don't have to rush or, or, or even skip a trade because I can't get in right away where I, I feel like on a, on a day trade, I want to get in within a minute or two of the alert going off because right. that can make a difference. Right. But you know, on swing trading, not so much. So maybe well, I will, I will evolve I, myself. I, I'm slower on the swing trading. Believe me. 
Well, Ed, you're new to this. Uh, are you um, more of a swing trader, day trader? You're just trying to learn these. Maybe you don't do any of it I, yet. I've been buying. I bought my first Bitcoin in uh, 2017, and I've just dabbled with it until this year. Uh, for various reasons, I thought I'd get more active, and okay. uh, <laughs> now I just try to keep up. <laughs> All right. So you're going from from being a hodler to trying to trade a lot more frequently. Is that accurate? My weakness is that I hodl or hodl or hofter or whatever you want to say, but but uh, I can get in most of the time with the exception of the fact that they've taken a number of exchanges away from me because I'm an American. Yeah, uh, I hear that. But, which is why, yeah, but the bottom line is I'm learning. I'm just not quick. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if you're new DJ. to... Yes. I just want to say welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, Ed, you're among friends here. So, um, and I was going to suggest, you know, start spot trading on, on Coinbase. That's still open to Americans. It's pretty yeah, easy to I, use. I, interesting. I, I was, I made that decision. I've got to get to it. I, I started a long time ago on, on Coinbase. I start, I've, I've been on Kraken and Gemini and Bittrex and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, uh, but I think I'm going to have to go back to it. And it's, I, I just was never comfortable there. I was more comfortable on the other two or three or four or five. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Finding an exchange and figuring it out. Cause it's just like learning software. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then you get kicked off and that's frustrating. You have to relearn it again. And sometimes it's just exhausting, but, uh, I will say for, you know, for the newbies, definitely learn spot first. And then, and Coinbase probably isn't going anywhere. So that's a, a good place to start, especially if you're in the U.S. And once you're more advanced, there's some more advanced traders on this. You know, we have some workarounds to get on foreign exchanges and trade leverage. So I understand. And, and I, I guess yeah. my question, I guess you can go to a VPN, and, but then you've got to get a, you ought, if they're going to ask you NYC, you got to come up with a foreign address. And why bother? I just, that's not how I'm built. All right. It's not for everyone. So I think you mean KYC, but uh, yeah. I, I did. You, yes, you thank you. All right. Let's, um, well, let's see if we can find some some day trades, some swing trades, something to do over the weekend. I will share my screen. We'll go over to Altcoin Alert and see what's over there. All right. So you should be seeing my Altcoin Alert page. Yes. Thank you. And... I will start with the AA score. I'm on the altcoin radar, not the dashboard. I want all the information. So mm -hmm. the altcoin radar is where you can find that. I'm going to sort by the AA score, look for the highest ones, preferably 80 or higher or even close. I've been trading ThorChain a lot this week, 79.4, close enough. RSR, I was trading today. So these two were the ones I was focused on the most. And... um what, what uh, Allcoin Alert is telling us is there's a 79.4% chance that Rune yeah. will go up 3% or more the next 48 to 72 hours. So you might want to keep that in mind if you're spot trading. I'm on leverage. I'm trading both directions. So what this tells me is, is you know, when I see that it's bullish, but it's down a little bit. If it's doing this, I like that as a day trader. As a swing trader, I want, you know, more more singular motion in my in my favor but for now we'll focus on day trading let's look at uh, rune i think i have it up already and we'll go to the five minute first we are sitting on the sma line which is this red line between the bollinger bands which are these two green lines this one and this one and this is sort of a condensed uh visual of how the market's doing i'm like the dip trading that i like to do something like this the one two three dip most of you guys should have seen that the icoin pro uh, strategy a dip and a retrace is i think the ideal entry and we get one of those here back on uh back early this morning one two not really a third dip but a pretty good recovery here and so had I been trading at this time, I eventually would have picked up 
1% on the chart times 10x le leverage is 10% for me. As a, as a spot trader, you might be looking for a little bit bigger move. Uh, you might want to use, you should use actually support and resistance or well, resistance for your, uh, for your exits. You know, this red and green can help with that. Green for good entries, red for good exits. Uh, you can also use the RTI for that kind of thing. We'll go over that in a little bit mm -hmm. detail on the, on the 15 minute chart. So yeah, if you, if you did get in here at this dip, you can use the SMA line for an exit or this red band resistance as an exit. If you if you did that, you'd still be in that trade, which is fine. You can also kind of eyeball where the resistance is. There's a, a resistance before this one, right about here. You see multiple candles stop and start. Mm -hmm. A few over here and then a few more over here. So had you identified this as a resistance, that could have been an exit as well. So if you get in here at the green zone, right when they're starting to recover from the dip, you've got one exit here at 2.39%, another one a little higher at 327 and then the red zone here at about 4%. However, Rune is not punched up that high yet today. And that doesn't surprise me. A lot of times on Friday afternoons, things just sort of peter out. People go away, they get busy, and at least in the, this part of the world, they, they're not trading as much. And then it's you know Saturday morning in other parts of the world, so they're not necessarily trading that Yay! much. Yay! <laughs> yeah, where our friend Craig is, he's living in the future. We're in the past. And uh, yeah, the, the volume tends to slow down. But last weekend, we had pumps over the weekend, so, you know. It's a general rule, not a specific one. Okay, so that's the five-minute analysis. If you want to put a price alert here, we're going to go over indicator alerts shortly, but if you if you just want to do a price alert, that's fine. Right-click, add your alert. Uh, 637 sounds good. Uh, only once is the trigger. And I usually use the information source to name my alerts. That's an AA score purchase. Uh, notifications, I'm gonna notify an app. That's just the app on my phone, pop up on my computer screen. I don't need that for this. And play a sound, uh, whatever sound you wanna choose. You, you might even wanna test them. So that's how you do that. So that's a five minute chart alert on the price. I prefer alerts on the 15 minute chart on indicators. And the setup I've been using the last couple of months is this RTI, relative trend index. And I use the cumulative delta as confirmation on my trend trading, not so much on my, on my dip and retrace trading. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over both scenarios. We've got the, on the 15 minute chart, it's a pretty similar setup. It's sitting at the SMA line, which is kind of no, no man's land. So that's not a, a really good entry. I've got support down here in the green zone around 631, resistance up here around 665. And so I'll keep that in mind. The RTI will, there's a few different ways you can use it. If you want to catch a trend, you can set an alert for when it breaks above the 50. And we had that happen on Thursday morning and got this nice move here. Mm -hmm. it broke above the 50 and now oh, this, this is malfunctioning a bit. Might need a new mouse. 2.4% and if you stayed in longer, the top of the red zone, you know, closer to 4%. So that's a good day trade. If you pile up two, three, four percent moves, even one percent moves, uh, your balance can grow pretty quickly. We we do love compounding. So that's a fifty. You can also set it at this eighty value, and and then look at your your cumulative delta here to see what kind of confirmation you have. At the fifty, you've got you know multiple green candles going up. At the 80, even more. So 
the 80 doesn't serve us as well. You know, pick up 1% and then, you know, a little over 1% if you stay in longer. Um, so that's how you do that on a trend. If you're trading short, you can do it the same way, going down. You can pick up a short here. This triggered uh, this morning. Made uh, like a 1.2% move. Again, on 10x leverage, that's a nice trade. Otherwise, you, know, you can't trade spot necessarily. Um, going short, you have to do that on a leverage exchange. Though you, you can't use 1x leverage, but most people use like 5x or higher, like Craig and I were talking earlier. So that one was a an okay trade, and there are a few other dips below. But you know, if the green zone looked the same, I probably would not short this close to um, support. Don't short near support. If I'm getting in a short, I usually want it to be between the red zone and the in the middle area. But if I can squeeze out a one percent here. Yeah, I might I might take that trade. So that's the trend trading approach. Uh, the other way to do this is to catch a dip or a pump. See, here's an example of that. So the, this dips below the 20 and then breaks back up right here. So you can see we get a, a pretty nice entry. Though so it has is it's at the it's at the um, SMA line, but um, it's it's coming up from the you know from the low area here from the green zone and get a nice move almost three percent so that's a pretty good entry and it breaks below the twenty and comes back up when it pumps above the the eighty and then drops that can be a good place for a short and pretty similar to breaking below the fifty in this particular example and we just went over that so. I'll show you how to do alerts on, on both scenarios. For if you're spot trading, you're gonna right click on the RTI, add an alert. And we're gonna be crossing up. If you wanna use the 50, that mid zone, you can type in 50. If you're gonna leave this, on, if you wanna trade all day, you go over to the one bar per close or once per bar. I've had better success with the one bar per close. Um, and the alert name, same thing, AA score purchase, and your notifications will be the same. And you click create, and you're good to go on that. If you want to use the 80, have a break even farther with you know better evidence of a of a trend, put in the 80, and everything else is the same. So that's more for for spot trading. If you want to trade both directions, like I usually do. We're going to exit a channel. We're going to go with 80 on top, 20 on the bottom, once per bar close, and same thing. That's going to create kind of a zone. So when it breaks above the 80, you'll get an alert. When it breaks below the 20, you'll get an alert. And um, and you're not you know, really bound to the 80 and 20. If you want to be sure, you can go with 90 and 10 or 105 or, or whatever you want to test out, depending on what the market's doing. So that's how you do a trend alert. If you want to do a retrace alert, we're going to use um, crossing up on the 20 and crossing down on the 80. So we'll just do the crossing up on the 20. And that's something that's been beaten down and starting to come back. And that those can mm -hmm. be really good trades. A, a score purchase and everything else is the same. Uh, you can also do that uh, if you want to short, you can cross down on the 80. Once per bar close, and that'll keep it on until you turn it off. And there you go, click create. Now, if you want to do both directions, we're going to enter a channel. AD on top, 20 on the bottom, 
once per bar closed and <clears throat> I think I'll just go ahead and take this one and I like three notes reverb click create and this will show up you know in my in my list mm -hmm. I already have an alert on rune so I'm going to turn that one back off All right, so I went through a bunch of different scenarios on that. I hope uh, you follow it okay. If you're new, you might want to, you know, get the replay and go over this part again if it's confusing. Um, that's that's essentially how I set up my alerts for day trading on all coin alert suggestions. Any BJ, questions? Yo. Yes, I would like to know more about the settings you've got in the RTI. Okay, let's check it out. Now you've got that configured. I've just just installed it, and it looks very different. And I was just wondering okay. why your setting, what your settings are. I don't know if I changed this. I didn't. I may have. It I looks think, the same. Okay, I, the signal strength might be fifty on the on the default, kind of like it is on Bollinger Bands. And I may have moved. No, it to it's is it 20? It's showing showing the same. Oh, your mind's showing the same. Um, so this... I added this this midline. I bolded the white part. I, I may have I don't right. recall what the color is. So that's going to be yeah. different. Um, right. I don't know if I changed. And you changed the top the top color to yellow. I think is the other thing you've done. Okay. Yeah. So. I use yellow a lot because it's visible on black. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, That's about it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. It's just the chart I'm looking at. It's got a lot more shaded area, but then I'm looking at a different coin. So, very we've well. Got a lot that. Okay. Any, Thank you. Any, you're welcome. Any other questions on Rune? Okay. Let's see what else we can find. So that was an AA sort. Um, that was an AA sort. Let's look at the long-term sentiment. We'll sort this. I'm looking to match this up with the elder impulse. Now you could either go long-term and daily, which might be better for swing trading. I've used it for day trading, but I'm starting to think this might be better for swing. And then if you, for day trading, you might want to, sh you know, let's sort, the, we can never do this. Let's just sort by short-term sentiment and match it up with the elder impulse hourly. Mm -hmm. And we'll look for bullish on both. Um, sentiment is what people are talking about online. You can hover over the question mark and get more information on that. And the elder impulse is a technical indicator. So I'm going to match up the sentiment with the technical. That's worth further investigation, I think. We've got bullish on all of these on Avalanche, Mana, H bar, um, AVAX and H bar. I trade a lot, Raven occasionally, Mana occasionally. So we've looked at AVAX as a swing before. Let's look at H bar. So I'm going to go through this faster than I went through the others because I already gave you the basic setup on the prior uh, rune chart so on the five minute we're in the red zone now which is not where i want to buy i want to buy down here in the green zones at the most this yellow area the middle area probably in this vicinity maybe so this is where i'm seeing some short-term support for h bar around seven around seven cents 7.1 so you can set your Price alert here. That's uh, copy. Oops, wrong one. Add alert. <coughs> and, you know, call it what you want. And um, when this goes off, reevaluate. Okay, on the 15 minute with our indicators. And this could be something to short, but do you want to short in a bull market? I got burned on a short this morning. Um, I messed up the setup. It was my fault. I had, thought I had a stop loss in place, and it wasn't. And ouch. So happens to even the those of us who have some experience. So 
If you're going to use shorts, I would say go in smaller than usual and or use a stop loss. So um, nothing goes straight up. You know, something will pump and then dip, pump and then dip. That's uh, you can you can make some money on some shorts that way, even in a bull market. Okay, on H bar. Yeah, this hasn't been below the 20 on the 15 minute chart since early yesterday morning. So it could be a while before it dips back. So it did break the 50 Thursday morning and again the afternoon, but not since. For this sure. might be the one to get in when it breaks above the 80. There's a couple breaks above the 80 here and here. Let me use my vertical line. Um, here's a good entry. Yeah, there's another one right about here. So these are all entries that dip below the 80 and then pump back up. We don't have great confirmation <clears throat> on the um, cumulative delta. This is the best entry. No, not really. The delta isn't really helping us on any of these. It's mostly going sideways. We get, so, we get a break up here that's already at the top. So it's a bit of a crapshoot. But I know it's a good idea to go to the some of these lower values to get better a better look at the delta. You can see a little better idea on the five minute chart. I think Frank even likes the two and three minute charts for the delta, but I like the five and the fifteen for it. Anyway, so a break above the eighty might be the best way to go. In, in recent history, sometimes I just ignore that. And I just go, you know, I'm just going to do my basic setup and see what happens. And, you know, if I get a break above, if it dips below and then breaks up again, above again, I get some pretty good action on the cumulative delta, then, then I'll get in pretty much regardless of what it's done in the recent past. That's a judgment call you got to make. Mm -hmm. So as a short, kind of dangerous. All these these dips below the 80 were fake outs. Like this, there's a couple dips here, and they just bounced right back. Let me move these back over here. So yeah, I'm not liking this as a short, um, unless I saw some, you know, like a something like that, break below the 80, then below the 50, and then maybe I'd get in. Okay, any questions on questions on H bar? Mm -hmm. Very well. Let's uh, see what else we can find. So that was a short term sentiment. Let's do a long term sentiment. Cody, I trade that occasionally. Ada is a classic up twenty percent. Oh. Uh, I was in a long long trade and I, I got out of it at a loss and then it shot up. <clears throat> Murphy's Law, I swear. Solana looks good. We talked about that earlier. Vet, that's a classic too. OG coin. CRV, I've been trading. KDA occasionally. And AVAX, we looked at. HBAR, we looked at. SXP, I like. This one's a good mover, up 6% today. You know, when I see them up 20 and 30%, sometimes it's not a good time to trade. That's one you might want to set an alert on and get in in the next day or two. But SXP does a lot of this, which is a day trader I like. I need to find a better word for this, range trading, more of a range type thing. So there we go. Quick look at the five. Going kind of sideways on the five. The top of the Bollinger Band. It's not much distance. I may have spoke too soon. This one's trading in a very tight range at the moment. Hmm. Uh, supports here at about 40 cents. And I see it again here at around 40 and a half. So that might be a place for a price alert on the five-minute chart. On the 15, 
We are in the red zone. Um, and it looks more like, I mean, here's a good, a good break below on a short below the 80 from uh, wee hours of the morning on Thursday. That makes a nice move, about 4%. I like that. And then you can turn around, grab it again in the uh, in the green zone. Say it breaks above the 50 or the 80 and pick up another couple percent. You know, nice. Uh, I love doing that. Catch that low and then get the bounce back. That's, that's good stuff. So again, you can use your RTIs to sniff out some of these. Break above the 50, break above the 80 are good trend trades on the long side. Um, break below the 50 and below the 20 can be good trend trades on the on the short side. Look at your cumulative delta to help on confirmation. And uh, set those alerts, make some money. On the dip and the retrace, we don't have much of that on this chart. It only dips below the 20, actually it doesn't quite make it goes to about 20.5. So I don't know if my alert would have would have gone off here, but obviously that's a really good entry. You know, if your alert if it goes down to say 19 and comes back up, you get in here. You know, the mid zone is 6%, red zone is is 11 and you hit the red zone less than a day. That's a great trade. So And that's going to be your alert breaking above 20. And then on the short side, we don't really have any good examples of the shorts. So other than, the, than this one we looked at earlier. So that's what I see for a swipe. Any questions on SXP? All right. Well, we had a nice uh, exchange of ideas earlier. So we're at about 40 minutes now. Uh, any question? Any questions generally, or coins you want to look at before we sign off for the weekend? All right. Well, thank you so much for being with me on a Friday afternoon. If you're watching this on the recording, please check out the opportunities in the pinned comment to help support the channel. You guys, have a good weekend. Hopefully, we'll see you back on Monday. Bye. Thanks, CJ. Appreciate the help. You are welcome.